Um, okay, so it looks like everyone's here. Um, I'm sure people will be joining along the way. So, um, but I will get started. Hopefully you can see my screen and you know where you're at. Today, we're gonna talk um, briefly about just the two flex programs we have here at Rady. We'll talk about the content, the electives, the core, um, what's available to students in terms of student services and some of the benefits that they can expect um, by joining the Rady MBA program here at UCSD. So um, to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the folks that are here. Uh, my name again is Christina Cook. Actually, I didn't say it. So my name is Christina Cook and I am the admissions contact for the executive MBA program here. Um, Audrey Phillips, who is also on on, on the call. She is the director of MBA admissions for Rady. And then my, my counter colleague, um, Sophia Palomino, she does exactly what I do, but she does it for the, the Flex Evening program. Um, and so if you already know you want to chat with us, please write down our email address and phone number, and we will be more than happy to meet with you in any form that you'd like. Um, at the end of the presentation, I also have two QR codes that you can scan if you wanted to set up an appointment. They, the QR codes lead directly to our calendar. So first, um, what are we doing today? You know, why are we, we're going to talk about why an MBA might be useful to you? Why, why do you want to come here? What makes us different? A um, little bit about the admissions process, financing, and then some, we'll have some time for a Q&A. Um, and I tend to treat these a little bit more casual than some, so I'm, I'm hoping we can have a conversation today, not necessarily the soliloquy that I was joking about in the beginning. Um, so my first question, I guess, is how many of you um, are looking to apply for this year? Is there, is there anyone with an application that's in that is just sort of picking up some last minute information from us? Okay. So it looks like, I know there's one of you here, but I'm not sure, maybe you're not listening. <laughs> oh, you are, okay, great. Um, so there's some folks. Karim, you're applying for this year? Um, yeah, no, I think it's gonna be next year. I have my wedding okay, list. Got it, okay. All right, well, so all of the information, the great part is all this, all this information is relevant for this year and for next year, um, but just trying to get the conversation started here. So we're gonna get started. So why do people really wanna get an MBA? Um, most of the time people come and they look into an MBA program because they want to accelerate the career in one way, shape, or form. Sometimes they want to increase the salary potential that they have over the long term and an immediate change. Um, some are looking to um, you know, move up along the chain within the organization or elsewhere, um, or they're interested in making a pivot. We do find that quite often is that folks will be in a career. Um, and then ultimately, maybe five to 10 years out, they, they realize, you know, I think I'm either going to want to pivot, you know, in the next couple of years, or I know I'm going to want to make a change in the long run, and this will really help me get get myself positioned for that. Um, some folks are just like, hey, I'm, you know, we do find this quite a bit in, in the San Diego industry areas. This is a lot of biotech and scientists. A lot of folks are like, hey, I'm very good at what I do. I'm a bench scientist, but I'm I'm being asked, and I also really like managing people. So, you know, I, I need to understand these skills. I don't have a business foundation, and while you learn on the job. You know, that's great, but some people really want to have that academic foundation as well. Um, and then finally, you know, a lot of people that are working domestically see an MBA as a way to broaden their horizons and possibly work overseas. Um, and just to talk still, you know, just briefly discuss the relevancy of an MBA. I know there's a lot of conversations out it about, about what the value is of, of higher education in general and certainly an MBA. Um, this is just a little statistic from the a GMAC recruiter survey. And GMAC is an organization that oversees graduate admission business school programs. And they oversee sort of the, the, the content and policies and processes. And they, they do a tremendous amount of research for us. And in 19, or 2022, we had 92% of global employers indicating they're still planning to hire MBAs. Um, even given you know, the, the recent kind of emerging from from COVID at that time. So at this point, it's gotta be even more. Um, so that's why people, you know, tend to wanna get an MBA. Um, that's not the case for anybody, for everybody, but those are the, the biggest reasons for a lot. Um, and how can it help you? As I mentioned before, some folks come back because they really do wanna have a firm and solid set of skills where they really understand how all the different departments within organization actually work together. They want to have a, a you know a better ability to plan strategically and understand the decisions that are being made or that they may be making 
and, and, and be able to foresee the consequences in the future. Um, and so that, that solid business foundation comes with an MBA. Not only will you um, gain the hard skills, such as the finance, the stats, the econ, accounting, but you're also going to be able to develop a lot of the soft skills too. And soft skills, you know, they're picking, you pick those up everywhere. You pick them up in conversations within the classroom, you pick them up from class content. And you also are able to really hone them and learn more about yourself through the networking and the kind of social opportunities you have through an MBA program. Um, it can also help you, as we mentioned before, have a you know, progress with your career. Um, you can certainly dive into specific sectors once you have that foundation of the business core curriculum. Um, typically, the second year of most MBA programs allow students to sort of choose areas and be interested and take more classes in those. And therefore, they could, you know, become more skilled and knowledgeable in specific subject areas. Um, and I mentioned, finally, just building that network, very, very important in an MBA program. In fact, the two things that I think of when I think of an MBA is network and group projects. And that's just because I, you know, I have one a long time ago, but you do, you're always networking with your, stu with your fellow students, with other students, with people on campus. Um, interactions with industry that interact and intersect with the, with the um, UCSD at all times. And finally, you'll have those, some of these people in your network will ultimately be some of your good friends. Um, I don't think I know anyone that's gone through the program that hasn't evolved or, or emerged with a couple of very, very solid friends. So why Grady? Um, I'm sure some of you are actually living in San Diego and that might be one big reason why you're interested in, in Grady. Um, it also happens to be that, you know, we are associated with UCSD, which is a highly prestigious institution. Um, it was recently ranked number eight of all public institutions within the United States by US News and World Report. Um, UCSD was ranked 20 in its list of most innovative schools. Um, you again, U.S. News and World Report, and you can kind of see the rest. Um, I think the one we're most proud of, though, is being ranked number four for learning um, by Bloomberg Business, and that we'll talk a little bit more about in terms of the faculty that you're going to engage with while you're at Wadey and, and how that transfers into just really having a wonderful learning experience. Um, and I think that just went forward, so excuse me for that. So why are we different? So in addition to, you know, maybe wanting to come to UCSD or San Diego, a lot of people want to come because number one, we're STEM based or STEM designated. And I'm sure most of you understand what that means, but STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. It is a designation that is provided by the Department of Education. And what it essentially means in a nutshell is that students emerging from a STEM designated MBA and or any other specialty master's program will have a very solid set of quantitative and um, technical skills. Typically, STEM MBAs tend to be more quantitative than others. Um, what it means for us is that we are teaching students how to use data, so how to find data, how to manipulate data, how to understand it, and use it to make decisions in the long run constantly. Um, so that's one of the main reasons people come to UCSD's rating program. In addition, I should just state that um, some schools actually have to, you know, many, you, you, now you see them more often, but in the beginning schools, some schools really couldn't obtain that uh, designation. They had to make very intentional changes in the way they were teaching and the, the material they were teaching um, to, to get that designation because it is a different type of education. Whereas at, at Rady, and I think in part is because we are part of UCSD, all of our graduate programs in the business college were immediately designated as STEM. There was nothing we had to do to change because that's who we are as, you know, just underneath it all. That's what we do. Um, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about our curriculum and our electives. They are a little bit different than your average program. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, I mentioned that STEM is in our DNA and, and we tend to look at, um, look at solving problems collaborate, collaboratively. So that goes back to sort of business as a science mm -hmm. with more minds involved in solving a problem. Typically the outcome is better. Um, we do have a healthy competitiveness amongst our students, but for the most part, you know, we encourage people working together and, and it just so happens that we attract individuals that want to do that as well. Um, UCSD is not, we are not within a vacuum. So, you know, in addition to what we offer with our, you know, with our college, um, there's cross school initiatives, including like the Skips, the Scripps Radio Ocean Challenge. We have Start Blue, which is actually an accelerator 
that comes out of the Sullivan Entrepreneurship Center within Rady. And that is a, um, it is a uh, collaboration between Scripps Institute of Oceanography and the Rady School. Um, and it essentially, it exists to serve as a catalyst for UCSD students and employees to be able to solve meaningful problems in relation to the climate and ocean health. Um, we have some memorandums of understanding with you know, some of the biggest hospitals in this area, Radies Children's and then just UCSD Health Science. So there's a lot going on. Um, and to speak at and how that, what that means for you is greater networking opportunities, but you can also take classes outside of our school and have them apply to your um, do degree as an elective. For instance, if you were a scientist, you want to understand more about the ocean, if you, you know, provided you could get into one of the classes over at Scripps, that class could be part of your MBA degree. And so you can transfer in 12 units from anywhere across campus, provided they're graduate level, and have them apply to your degree. Um, getting back to that number four ranking in learning, um, this is actually one of our professors who teaches our very, one of our very first core classes. Um, Chris Ovius, he was listed as one of the best professors, um, one of the best 40 professors under 40. Um, talking a little bit about just, you know, at Rady, we are exciting, we're dynamic, we're innovative, and we have a lot of younger professors that are constantly researching. Their research is, um, you know, very well known. Not only are they very, very good in what they do research-wise, they a lot of times they're consulting outside of the institution. Um, and then the other, I think the key part that's important to know about this particular group of faculty is while they're well known in research and they bring in money and all of the things that a research institution, you know, wants in their faculty, they're also very, very good instructors and they care. Um, we are not a super big school. And so you will be known in your class by your fellow classmates, but also by the professors. And um, the majority, majority of them have an open door policy. They really want students to learn. Um, I've interacted with them multiple times when they contact me wondering, you know, where is the student? I'm worried about them. Um, that's just not, a, that's not that usual where faculty will engage and try to find out what's going on with the student if they haven't shown up. I've worked in other schools where, you know, it's just, it's a non-issue. They don't even keep attendance. So it's a different place. We are small and we provide that special, um, you know, I think just as a result of that, you do, you are known whether you want to be or not, people are gonna know your name. And also you're gonna get a lot more specialized attention from us and from our faculty. These are the two programs that we're here to talk about today, um, the Flex Evening MBA and the Executive MBA. So they, they both, to just be clear to start, they're the same MBA. Um, there's nothing that it comes in, a, you know, there's nothing that's special on your um, diploma that says you're in an evening or an executive or anything like that. It's the same MBA as the full-time. They all require 92 units. They all require the same core curriculum and they all require that you, that, you know, they provide access to the same electives. And so you're not getting a watered down version is what I'm saying. The difference mainly is in the time length that it takes to complete the program and um, sort of the pace of the program in terms of the number of classes per quarter, as well as the group. Um, so the flex evening, again, it's 92 credits. Um, students come to campus twice a week in the, in the evening, um, 6.30 to 9.30. Um, you take two classes a quarter, so that's an eight credit load. And if you keep up that pace, you'll be done in about two and a half years or um, 27 months, and it, it, which ultimately turns into like 10 quarters. Totally normal to cut off a quarter if one wanted to, they would just need to load up a couple of classes along the way to cut off that final quarter. Um, and then with the executive or the flex weekend, same 92 credits, um, it meets every other weekend, however. So you're not coming to class during the evening, you're coming to class two days, um, Saturday and Sunday, basically twice a month. And you'll have full days of, of engagement with your cohort as well as the faculty. Um, it's a faster pace. You take three credits a quarter, which is 12 units. And if you keep up with that pace, you're out in two years flat. And there are some folks that actually get out in seven quarters versus eight, which is two years. Um, the key components to, you know, sort of the, in, I guess it comes with the flex name, is um, once you're done with the core curriculum, which we'll discuss in just a moment, all of our students are encouraged um, to take classes, you know, at different times. So for instance, if you're an executive student and you're, you know, you might be like, hey, I can't do these Sunday classes for a quarter or, or I want to take this class on Wednesday night. You can't. You can mix it up. 
therapist, you know, however you'd like and whatever meets your schedule and based on also when the classes are offered. So there's no, you don't have to stick with the original kind of set schedule once you complete the core. Um, you just need to take the core classes with your people and then you can move on. And that just allows you more versatility, um, more flexibility in your schedule and also a chance to meet other students. The final difference between these two programs that I didn't talk about um, is the profile of the candidate. So the Flex Evening program is designed for individuals earlier in their career, earlier to mid-career. Um, the average age, I believe, is about 26, 27. And then the, ex the executive, which um, is a slightly smaller group, it is designed for people with at least 10 years of experience, you know, kind of at a higher, slightly higher level. In that program, we have probably 50% of the candidates have advanced degrees. Um, so it's a slightly smaller, but a little bit more um, experienced group of people. And the reason why we have them kind of differentiated is we want every student to feel um, their one, that they're amongst their peers, but they also, we want to make sure their student experience is valuable and meaningful. And we want to make sure that if you're an executive, you'll be challenged and you'll be with people that are at that level. And likewise, if you're just three years out on the job, you're not going to feel awkward in a class of people with 25 years of experience. Um, and so that's kind of, the, those are the main differences between the program. <clears throat> this shows our core curriculum. And the core curriculum is something that all students must take. There is no choice. This is the foundation of the MBA program. And this is very typical of all MBA programs. If they're good, they're going to have a set group of classes that are similar to these. Um, the, the idea is to expose students to every functional discipline within an organization. So understanding how all of these pieces interact is really the key part of, of how, an, how an MBA benefits students. Um, so for example, if you know someone on the East Coast that has an MBA and you just have your MBA, there's, a, there's an understanding that you, that you have familiarity with all of these subjects. Um, the second year really is when you move on and you start taking electives. But you can see some of the classes that we have. They are some more technical. Um, you know, we have operations information system data. We have a business analytics class, which is uh, you know it's just kind of a lighter version of data analytics. And then um, you know, Radi Action Project, which is a capstone class that takes place in the second year. All students. Sorry if you can't hear me. There's some planes flying around. Um, but that action project allows students to either um, take the entrepreneurial track, which is when one would actually come in. Either you either have your own idea or you just want to understand that process. You work as a group to properly vet that concept. So you take something from ideation stage to the point. You run through the steps of due diligence, you understand that process. And at the end of that course, you, you will know whether that idea is feasible and you'll have a business plan if it is. The other option is to serve as a consultant with a company that approaches us with a, with a business problem. Um, you again would be working on a team um, to solve that business problem. And the, I, the, generally, those, 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 the learning outcomes are generally the same. They tend to revolve around something new, um, whether it's the entrepreneurship and a new idea or whether it's a company that's trying to enter a new market or they have a new product or they have a new technology and they want to find the applicability of it. Um, so they tend to be in those same, kind of in that same realm, but not always. Um, so that that's kind of our core curriculum. Um, every student that comes here will take these classes. Um, and that's, you know, I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like for each student. So this is basically what we call a sample plan of study. And this is what it looks like for our Flexi, Flex Weekend executive students. So you can see you're basically taking 12 credits almost the entire time. Um, the final quarter has eight, which is why, you know, for some students, they choose to maybe take one class in the summer. You know, they just sort of distribute those eight credits at a different time so they can, they can kind of get out sooner if they'd like. Um, but you can also see that you start taking electives, you know, in your second quarter. So, which is great um, in that way you can start, you know, start planning is, you know, a little bit more about what you want to do specifically and also exposes you to other students. Um, we do have a couple pre-term classes. The Management 406 is always offered. Part of it is always going to be offered during orientation. That's something to know. Orientation is a big deal. Um, and then going into the fall, we have another pre-term, which would take place on the, just the weekends between the summer quarter and the winter quarter. Uh, moving on to the evening, very similar, same classes as you can see just a slightly different pace. Um, the Management 406 is again offered during orientation, but you can see sort of the, the class 
breakdown is just a slower pace. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is while you can take your electives whenever you like, the core classes must be taken with your cohort. Um, and, that, and that's a good thing um, because the, that cohort is really the group um, that you're coming in with, or the people you're first gonna, you're going to be meeting with. This is typically your strongest networking group. Um, and what we do at the Rady School is we actually divide every student and put them in a very intentionally planned study group. Um, and so you conduct all of those group projects with that study group. And so not only are they your partners for group projects, but they're also sort of a, you know, I think your support system, your network, and sort of a lifeline. Because not everyone's going to show up you know, totally dialed in every day of every year. Some people are just, you know, they're not going to be there. So someone else is going to be picking up slack. Do we have any questions about any of this thus far? No. I do. Okay. Is there, are there any of the classes that are offered like online or are they all in person um, on campus? That's a good question. So right now, all of our classes are in person. Um, we tend to, you know, I, I think that's one of the benefits of our program. At least for many students, is that you are required to be here and interact and have a real life dialogue with the professors and other students. With that said, moving into the fall of 2024, however, um, we will be, you know, fingers crossed, the intention is to launch a hybrid executive program where students would be able to you basically come to campus three times a quarter versus the six, which it is now if you come every other weekend. Um, the meetings on campus, those are going to be a slightly different um, design as to what will be taking place, more intentional planning, because you're only going to be there for so long. So that would be about the extent of sort of the, I wouldn't say online, but there is asynchronous learning that takes place within those hybrid classes. Okay, um, and feel free to ask me any questions along those lines. I mentioned this before about the flexible schedule. Um, you can take electives, you know, really whenever you want. And it's it's important to note though that, you know, sometimes if, if you really want one class and it's not, you know, it's and you want it now, you might need to take the class at a different time than you're used to. If you, you know, if you're that set on having say negotiation in, in quarter three of your second year, you know, you're gonna have to take it when it's offered because we're not gonna be able to offer every single class every quarter for both the evening and the weekend in their separate time zone. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, but the idea there really is to give you flexibility and again, to meet more students because you will be interacting with other students because we, we encourage all of our students to sort of um, blend in. And that's just a chance for you to grow your network and have more friends. Um, these are some of the electives. I mentioned before earlier that one of our strengths here at Rady is our curriculum. And so you can kind of see that, you know, some of these, this is just some, the ones that I particularly think are cool. Um, many of them do revolve around sort of innovation, technology, newness, oh, I'm sorry about that, um, sort of launching something into to a new space. As you can see, we have venture development or venture finance one and two, those are two separate classes, new product development. Um, we are housed, you know, we are located in one of the country's biotech hubs. Um, fortunately, and so we do have classes that revolve around biotechnology and health science. Um, you also, which I actually think is pretty cool, is the CEO, um, the CEO board of directors and, and corporate governance class, and that really speaks to um, most people don't really think about that. But if you're a smaller company or you're looking to go public or you're looking to to grow, understanding that power network that and, and the, the power arrangement that takes place between kind of the employees and those who are making the decision and, and what those decisions mean in terms of investor relations, et cetera, is really, really important. Um, so do we have any, so you can kind of just get a sense, but we also have more classes. You can certainly find them on our website. And I'd be happy to tell you about even more that, that are um, a little bit more hidden in our website if you wanted to meet with us. Hey, Christina. Oh, yes. Yeah, on that hey, last one. So um, I think you have that new product development and then there's obviously the biotech focus. Yeah. Um, new product development, is it focused to a specific industry or how is that class laid out kind of in relation to your focused biotech classes? You know, I'm not sure. Um, so I, I think I think there's going to be a, a I, I think I know Michael Myers teaches this class and I believe it's it's more general. It's I don't think it's industry specific, but I will find out for you. And, and I, you know, I obviously know how to get a hold of you, so I will let you know. Thank you. But it, I, 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 I've been part of it, I've sat in part of it, and it isn't geared towards a specific industry, but 
getting the, the, the concept of like, for instance, the entrepreneurial track and the capstone. Um, there are lots of students that, you know, it used to be that actually was a required course. Everyone had to do this entrepreneurial track. Um, and some students, you know, you're like, hey, I'm not really interested in being an entrepreneur, um, but I'm going to take it. And then they go out into industry and they realize that within an organization, like let's say they're a product manager, the process is relatively the same. Um, they're having to go through due diligence, understanding if all the places are, you know, part the pieces are in place properly. The only real difference is that they have funding because it's in-house versus trying to find funding. And so my understanding with this particular class is that it is generally, you know, to speak to a wide variety of industries. But again, I will let I will let you know. Well, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, you are welcome. Um, and then so now we're just talking about basic, you know, application information. Um, I will, our application is relatively easy. Um, we, you know, we have a one start per year, that's the fall. And again, we're a quarter system. So we start late, which is typically the end of September. Um, we have fellowships available for our exceptional candidates. And the great thing about um, our process is you don't actually have to apply to be considered for a fellowship. We will actually, we review every candidate who, who applies for what's called the Rady Merit Fellowship. There are some other named scholarships that we have, um, and you certainly can, um, you know, if you're interested and you believe you meet those qualifications um, of the, the ideal candidate, um, we ask for you to just to complete a couple sentences. The difference is that, that they are not additional funds. It's just really an honor to be chosen. Um, by that organization. And it's something that you can use on your resume. And it's just, you know, you have a connection with the organization that provided that funding for you. Um, every UC graduate, whether it's UCSD or UC Riverside, you get an extra $10,000 on top of any merit award uh, that has been um, given to you, as well as those with an MD or a PhD right off the top. So if you have one of those or you're a UC grad, you, you get that additional funds right off the top. Um, and you know the process, the application itself. We ask for the the body of the application, which nowadays everything is online. So it's just completing an online portal. It asks demographic information, a couple short answer questions. Um, we ask for a resume. We ask for three essays that you would upload. But keep in mind, um, this is just something I tell people I talk to. Every you know every program, and we're no different. We want to understand why you want an MBA. Why now? And why do you want to come here? And so, you know, essentially that's what we're asking one of those big questions, one of those big essays. Um, we ask for unofficial copies of your transcripts. So um, we do not need official copies for our purposes in the Rady College to make a decision whether we want you in the program or not. If someone were to be admitted and decide to come, the graduate division of UCSD would require those official copies. Um, and, and so if any, if you went to community college to and transferred credits that you know helped you um, attain your bachelor's degree, we need to see those um, transcripts as well. Um, then we ask for two references, and those references are um, these are pretty typical of an application. But the good thing with the references is, is nowadays, um, at least with our 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 application. When you ask for someone to write a, a reference, they're not going to have to sit down with a blank piece of white paper and figure out what to say. Um, how it works with us is you enter their information into the online portal app, and they're sent an email, which takes them into, uh, gives them a link that takes them into your profile, and they will answer direct questions about it. And I say that because when you're asking someone to do you a big favor, you don't really have, you can't really make claims on their time. And obviously, you want them to complete this reference in a, you know, a reasonable amount of time. So when you tell them in advance, it's, it's, you know, they're not gonna be having to, um, you know, sit down with a white piece of paper and think it over. They're gonna have direct questions. It's gonna be relatively easy for them to complete that. I think it makes the ask a lot easier and they're more willing to get it done quicker because in the end, you really can't move them along. It's just a tough thing to do to ask your references to hurry up. I'm sure you all understand what I mean. Um, and so those are basically the main components of the app. So we ask for transcripts, resume, essays, um, short, you know, short answer questions within the body of the application itself, and then references. And then everyone that attended today, um, we're taking, we're taking um, 
the attendance, you, you will receive an application waiver, which is worth $200. And so even if you're not applying for this year, if you have, you're not already in that process, this will hold over for next year if you choose to apply in, in the fall of 2024. And we also just noticed our application for next year will be launched within the next, you know, I think within the next month, a month and a half. So if you're really raring to go, you could get started on next year's application, you know, um, you know, you know, within a couple of weeks. So that's good to know. We always encourage early applications too. So if you want to talk to us and you have, you know, you have burning questions um, and you there, there's private or something, you just want to meet with us, you can scan these QR codes for myself or Sophia. This will take provide the um, our Calendly links. And so Calendly is just an online schedule and it'll, it'll allow you to book a time to meet with either of ourselves. Um, or you can just contact us and, and we'll certainly arrange for something as well. And that's pretty much it. We have time for questions and answers. Obviously, I wanna thank you very much for your interest in rating. Thanks for coming during your lunch hour. I should have said in the very beginning that if, please eat if you're hungry because I know this is, is lunchtime for most people and I'm really hungry, but I'm, I, you know, I'm not in a position to eat, but I hope you are. So I guess the, the next, you know, I'd love to chat with you if you have questions. So please ask, feel free to take yourself off mute and or um, just, you know, throw something in the chat. No questions? Wow, I, I must have done a good job today then. <laughs> no? All right, well, I'm gonna ask a question um, as if I were a student. Let's say you're really interested, but you don't really know what the next step is. You think you wanna apply, but you're not really sure. Well, first we would say, hey, come to one of our information sessions and learn more about us. Two, we would say, hey, make an appointment with your advisor, myself or Sophia. But we will also have um, class visits. And we actually have someone in the room who's gonna be doing a class visit very soon. But um, in you know, once the fall kicks off, you'll all have the opportunity to sign up to attend an MBA class, whether it's an evening class or, or executive class. And what we do is we, we pair you with a current student. They will meet you, they will take you to class. Um, and if it's a weekend class, you have the option to stay for lunch and network and meet all of the other students. If it's an evening class, you have that same option. It's just you come for the dinner portion beforehand. So that's one way to sort of learn more about our culture and, and kind of get a sense of who we are and who our students are. And of course, see our faculty in action. Um, we will also be holding other sort of online um, presentations like this, but that are very specific. So we have industry specific ones. We have things called SIP sessions, which are just really casual conversations with people in Rady that you would otherwise not come in contact with in the application cycle. Um, we'll have master classes, which is just a way for you to get a sense of who our faculty are. We'll teach a sample class, um, very interactive kind of arrangements. And of course, you can always come and take a tour with one of, a, um, one of us. We'll be sure to be very entertaining and make sure you're having a good time. So those are some of the things you can look forward to do, look forward to and engaging us if you if you have that so desire. Uh, okay. I did have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So for in regards to the references, is there a way to maybe get access to like the questions that were they're going to be asked um, just so they could have a little bit more preparation and we can just kind of sure. Yeah. So if you want, you know, just meet with which, you know, if you're interested, whichever program, meet with one of us and we can kind of basically give you kind of basically I've done this before I sort of just go in and I cut and paste some of the questions just to give you an idea they're pretty much like you know we want to know about who you are some significant components of your leadership ability how they've known you that sort of thing so we can certainly provide those for you to give you a better sense and prepare your advice your your reference or your, your recommender excuse me for what they may be up for okay great thank you sure uh anyone else Okay, can any one of our staff think of a question? That, oh, I have, Jean. I have a quick question. Um, I'm looking at the curriculum online and it talks about like action projects. Yeah, I'm one of those that's kind of been thrown in and learning as I go. Um, is there a way that we can like incorporate these action projects with our current jobs? That's a good question. Um, I think that there is a policy that the professor of this class does not really want you taking um, a work project, and that's mostly because other students will also be working on it with you. 
So I think in the past, um, other schools, they've run into problems where students have access to company information that it's not their own company. Um, and so there, there are issues there that we certainly don't want to dive into. But, um, and sometimes I think that um, it's just the, there are very specific learning outcomes that our professors want for these particular projects. And so it's rare for a, a work project to fit into that perfectly. But what I can tell you though, is if you are, if you do have a work project and you want to, you know, bring it into the program and apply um, kind of the knowledge that you're learning and get some assistance, you can ask, you can basically design a self-study or an independent study with a professor. They would of course need to agree to do this with you, but they could help you work through that project, whatever it may be. Um, and it, but of course it would be just you working on it. You wouldn't have a team of other MBAs, but that is a way to bring something that you're currently doing um, benefit in your work um, directly, as well as get some credits. Um, and one thing I should say, the great thing about these working professional programs is you will you will be learning something you know one day and really under you can basically start applying some of those things to your work um, right away. And over time, it becomes much easier because you have a lot more knowledge and you understand the context and some of the problems happen. But you really have that opportunity to do that um, versus, let's say, the full time program where you've kind of shut off that part of your brain for a while and you're in student mode. Um, there's just, you know, I think that's a better way to really solidify what you're learning um, to be able to apply it right away. Okay. Any other questions? I just had a question, actually. I'm not sure what happened to it. It, it flew away. Um, I guess the other, what I was going to ask my my colleagues here is if there's anything that I they think I should talk about that I missed. Um, no. Okay, I still have something floating around my brain. I'm trying to like talk I, about until it comes out. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a question for you, Christina. Let's okay. say I am right on the cusp in terms of professional experience and I'm debating between sex evening or an executive program. What kind of advice would you give me as I'm kind of trying to figure out which would be a good fit? It's a great question. So I think the first thing I would do is I, I obviously want to talk to you um, one on one and understand where your what your goals are, what you're hoping, um, you know, where where you are in your space, and what sort of you know um, what kind of experience you have, and ultimately again where your goals are. Um, most of um, you know, it, 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 within a conversation, and sometimes it becomes very apparent to the student which program is a better fit. Um, typically, those that have, you know, that are higher level management, um, that are or, or or are already like, you know, or, or moving into directions where they're really going to have more budgetary control, um, more influence over the financial matters, and certainly bigger groups of people. Um, if you have, you know, ten plus years of experience, I would probably say take a look at the executive first. Um, go to visit a class, see if these, you feel comfortable in this classroom, you feel like you could learn. Um, that would probably be my first advice is just to get some idea. If you're like, let's say you're, you're eight years and again, you're not really sure. Um, and you know, you, you've had some work experience, but you've been moving around different industries. Um, and so you don't feel like you've really put your, put any tracks in, in one particular place. Um, while you're while you're really on that cusp, I'd probably you know I'd probably say why don't you visit an evening class, see how you like it, see and and obviously meet with Sophia. But ultimately, when it comes to choosing between the two, um, you know everyone is you know it, the evening the evening class the flex evening um, you can have twenty years of experience and be in that class if that's what you want. You may not have the same core group. You know, certainly you'll find your people, but you're going to have other folks that are probably less experienced than you. Um, whereas executive, you know, if you don't want to be talking to someone with two years of experience and be on a group with them, then you know you're definitely going to want to be with a group that's kind of going to be pushing you, you know, where you are. And so it sort of just depends on you know your life, what your goals are, and really where you're coming from. Is that. How did you feel that I? That was a great oh, answer. You know what to do yeah, now. Thank you so much for that advice, Christina. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, ultimately, it's just a conversation, um, and it's the choice. It's the the student's choice. Um, we just try to paint the picture as to what each of those options. Are. 
the good thing to know, one thing I'll say this again, whichever program you start in, you can certainly take electives in the other program. You know? So you still have that opportunity to have that type of schedule at times and also to be able to interact with those students. So we actually, even the full-time students, very rarely will they will they change. They, you know, they they don't really want to come to class on the weekends because they're, but we we encourage them to because it'd be great if they could hang out with some executives, but they even have the same option to be able to blend and, and take those classes with folks at a different level to hopefully gain from that experience too. Ah, okay. Well, um, I know we're at time. This is supposed to end at 1245. So feel free to drop off if you don't have questions. Um, if you do, I'm happy to hang out a little bit longer. I don't see anything came up in the chat. So, um, and again, we, we would really do, this is, we're a small program. We are, you know, Sophia and I like people. We like to talk to you. We like, so please, please feel free to reach out to us and we, you know, hopefully we can provide some more information for it if you're interested. Right. Okay. Well, thanks so much for spending, excuse me, <clears throat> spending your lunch hour with us. And um, again, please, you know, thanks again for your interest in Rady and hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you all. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Christina. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks. Um, actually, Christina, if you still have a moment. Sure. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, a full MBA is what I need, or I was also looking at the micro MBA program, mm -hmm. um, which I felt would be a good litmus test. Uh, but I see that that's already mid session right now. Is there any way to kind of like poke in on that and see if that's along the lines of what I need? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I would need to talk to um, someone who would know the answer and I can get back to you about that. It, it may be possible to drop in for one class to get a sense. Um, what I can tell you is that I'm, I'm I, I've been both. I have an MBA and I'm in that micro just to get a, you know, get a sense of what it's about. Um, and uh, it may give you a sense. I'm not sure if just one class is going to give you a real idea as to whether, you know, you, whatever choice you want to make. Um, mm -hmm. Because they are very, they are pretty surface level. They'll get detailed, but nothing like you would with a class itself. You're just having an hour and a half, very high level talk about a subject. But if you, you know, I will see what I can do and see if you can go to a couple of them or at least one. And if you know you're loving it, then for sure. If you don't, you're not sure, you're like, eh. Um, there is UCSD Extension. They do offer certificate programs. There's a business management program. They have some different kind of subsets within that. That's sort of, you know, those are much, you know, they're, they're longer periods of time. You're engaged in subjects. Um, you know, far less of a financial and time commitment, um, but you do get some, a little bit more exposure from the micro MBA. Because that might actually be more along the lines of what I need because I have a degree from, from UCSB in psychology and I've been a writer, a journalist for a long time, um, but now sort of transitioning into more of an executive role and I feel lost and I'm tired of being one in the meetings. Like I don't understand any of the acronyms. I've never seen a spreadsheet like that. Yeah. So I think what I might need is more uh, undergrad level or surface level. So yeah, I mean, and you know, so one thing to keep in mind, yes, you see the extension would probably offer you someone specifically when you're talking about the business or the finance accounting, understanding the sort of the technical side, because that's usually where most people are the most uncomfortable. Um, but just so you know, an MBA program, there are people that come to the program without any business background whatsoever um okay for an, so it's not it's, it's not a, and that's kind of why it's considered a general business degree is that um you don't need to have a pre you know you don't need a business undergrad you don't need to be working in business and now i think again that's another reason why it's so dynamic and why the networking the, the learning that takes in the classroom it's really those those experiences conversations and dialogues you have with faculty and with each other, they're informed by your own experiences. And collectively, that's a very wide range of experiences in the class. So you don't need to have a specific background. Um, you do start, you know, as if you didn't know, the classes are as if you don't know anything. Start accounting from very, you know, from the very beginning. So um, 
but I'm happy to chat with you more in detail, but I would say those are really your options is either a certificate program. Um, a lot of times people will do a certificate program and like, hmm, this is cool, but I needed a lot more. And then, you know, they, they will enroll in an MBA program. Um, it's sort of just, you know, defining what it is, how much time you want to put in, and what it is that you're looking for. But we do have English Lit majors in our program. We have psych majors. We have all sorts of folks. So, and the one thing I will tell you is like an MBA, um, it, it changes the way you think. And you, it's very, very subtle and you won't notice it for probably the first six months. But then you'll start realizing that as you look at the world and you're looking at things on the stores, on the, you know, the billboards and stuff, you're going to start realizing you're sort of interpreting um, kind of information differently. And, and, and you're sort of, you know, what it, what it teaches you to do is really look at things from a different analytical framework. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a subset of just the act that knowledge is the basic skills and knowledge you get. That's just a, a change in how you approach things and how, how you approach problems. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah, that definitely helps because, okay. you know, it's just, it's been so long that I'm trying to figure out what level I should try to re-enter and, and right. kind of where I belong. Because I imagine an MBA program like this would be full of like, you know, business students that already know all this stuff that I'm struggling to learn. So, okay. I would Good say we have far fewer people with, I mean, in fact, I mean, the percentage of people that have a business undergrad in the in like you know both of our classes, it's pretty small. I mean, I'm going to say maybe ten percent. Really? Okay. Yeah. I might I say mean, less. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's less. It's not a lot. We get a lot of folks that are scientists. We get a lot of folks that are in you know in San Diego for whatever whatever they're doing. Um, we have a lot of military folks, so it just sort of depends. But I would say that having a formal academic business background is pretty rare um, at UCSD. Okay. You might go to some other schools where you know it is common, but it's not it's 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 not common here, and it certainly does not need to be the case. Um, MBA programs are that's the beauty of them is that everybody you know can apply. Well, that muddies the waters right back up. So thank I you. know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what I would do is, you know, I'll try to find an answer out for you about the micro MBA. Um, and then what I would do is just like make an appointment with myself or Sophia, depending on which program you're interested. And then when we do have the opportunity, when the class visit program starts, um, I would definitely take advantage of that and go to a class because part of an MBA um because is, is really learning from your colleagues and sitting in that classroom and watching all the dynamics. And a lot of what you're learning in that context will also inform you in, in how, um, how one can ideally engage in a business setting and business conversations, understanding how that all works, because it's kind of a language in and of itself. Um, so I would encourage that and, you know, sort of just take I'd say little steps in each direction to sort of see what fits. The micro MBA is all online. Um, and so that is a different experience. And I honestly don't, I, I think extension, many of the classes are online too. Um, I'm not sure, but that's something you can easily look up. Yeah. All right. I have a quick question about, you, you mentioned that there's maybe like 90% or more of people and candidates that are getting accepted that aren't with a business background, what kind of makes these candidates stand out? Well, I, I think the, the, and I mean, my, my colleagues can answer this too. To me, what makes the candidates stand out is kind of most, a lot of times it has to do with their goals and what they're hoping to accomplish and sort of the fervency in which they have and how they're approaching it. Um, individuals that have worked and have kind of learned things along the way that, and then have also learned about themselves. So they get to the point where like, I need this, or I want this because um, I think those are the ones that are the most attractive to me. It doesn't really matter what their background is. Um, Obviously, because we're in this industry, we do see people from the tech and the science and you know biotech areas. But what I think stands out to most of us is like, you know, do they are they really in this? 
you know, do they, you know, because obviously it's an, it's an investment like of time. You you would need, you kind of, you know, a student would want to really be dialed in before they get into this. And so um, seeing the passion that one has towards reaching their goal is typically the biggest litmus sign to me as to what makes someone stand out. Would you guys, what would you guys have to say, Sophia and Audrey? Yeah, I think just kind of putting it in layman's terms, can a student clearly paint a picture of what their life is going to be like after they get their MBA? I think if they can, in the application, clearly make me see what that picture is, then I feel like, yes, they are probably going to be a great candidate. They know why they're pursuing this and um, what those next steps are going to look like and what they're going to benefit from, from the degree. And then also what they're going to contribute to as an alum and also to the Rady community, or I'm sorry, the San Diego community as a whole. I think being able to really define what that looks like for you, because coming back to school at this level, you need to know what your goals are. Um, that's really what's going to get you to the next level. Everybody wants to work at a great organization that supports their values and where they have a, you know, they're compensated well, right? But what does that translate to? I think coming in with a very good idea about what those next steps are, whether it's the company or the title that you're looking for, or the city that you're looking to go and, you know, move to, um, to take this next step is really something to consider too. And some people will, you know, translate that to their in their application as well as in their interview and these advising sessions, which allows Christina and I, you know, um, a better way to help support you and, you know, talk about what this pathway forward looks like. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you guys. That's a good question. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Alejandro, you're here. I know you must have some questions. Um, well, my question is about when are you going to announce um, or maybe give some details about the hybrid. Yes, we chatted about, I think we've chatted about this before. Yes. So you want to know a little bit more about the hybrid program and when it might become a reality? Yes. Okay. So I'll say this right now. So anyone that's applying, you know, that's in the executive program this year, even, even evening students, um, if you start this year, they will have the opportunity to take some hybrid electives in their second year. So we will be kind of transitioning in 2024, the fall of 2024, into sort of the classes will be in somewhat some hybrid um, and then some core. So the incoming class next year, um, if you know, as if it goes as planned, you would be taking the core in a hybrid fashion. Um, you could still take electives, you could still take electives. Um, you know, live, in, you know, every week if you wanted to come every week, but the actual core classes for the executive would be offered in a hybrid. So you'd be coming to class basically half the amount of time for the core. And if you decide, if you're like, hey, I can only come on weekends, then, you know, you you probably, you you I think you could still come and do some of the on the day weekend electives, but you'd have most people that can't that you know are trying to avoid coming to campus, or they're going to take advantage of the hybrid for just about it. So you could you could theoretically do your whole program hybrid if all you know starting next fall if that's if that's what you wanted to do. And if, again, I can't speak in, in 100 terms because this does need to be cleared by the faculty, but that is our intention. Great. Okay. Wish I could be more sure, but you know. I will, hopefully I'll be more sure in a couple months. All right. Okay. So if there are any, any more questions? No. All right. Well, thank you both for staying extra and asking such great questions. Um, we're here again. If you have more, this is what we do. So, all thank right. You. All right. Thanks guys. Bye guys. Bye.